Hi, welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover video of the Swift Contiki 894. So to fill your fresh water system on this vehicle, located just here on the side of the vehicle, using the main habitation key, which opens all the locks on the outside of the vehicle. This is lockable, so you unlock it, remove the cap, carry yourself a hose pipe, pop your hose into here, connect the other end to the tap and fill with fresh water. You can see on your control panel how much water you're carrying at any one time. Should you want to fill from a bucket using the pump though, there's a point here so we lift this cap off, 12 volt power point, point here, other end into here and connect that into the water, suck the water in and it will fill the fresh water tank. To hook the vehicle up, using the hookup lead, lift the collar, slide onto the vehicle first, then hook the sight or your outside point at home to charge the vehicle before your trip, and always do it in reverse order when unhooking so that you're never walking around with a live lead. LPG locker, so this is your gas locker. So push both catches in, we'll release the door. In here you can fit two bottles. The motorhome runs off propane. So to connect your pigtail to the top of the cylinder, it's left to tighten, right to loosen. So it's the opposite way with it being gas. Then you will need an adjustable wrench or gas spanner of some sort. Nip this up, turn the cylinder on, press the black button in, for 10 seconds which is your crash valve which allows the gas to come from the cylinder into the pigtail and then always make sure this yellow nib is flush and not sticking out if it's sticking out you will need to reset the second motion crash valve by pressing and holding for 10 seconds to reset this this shown green indicates that your gas is coming through if this was red either your gas bottle is turned off or your cylinder is empty Always ensure that it's turned off before you travel and that the, the bottle is stripped, strapped into the vehicle safely when traveling. This is your external shower point. So comes with the vehicle. There is a fitting which connects in here. As long as the pump's on, you'll get a pressurized flow of water to the exterior shower for hosing the dog off, the bikes, the boots. So located just underneath the skirt on this vehicle, you've got your two water outlet points one grey dirty water which is anything you've collected from the sink shower hand basin and one blue which is your fresh water so if you've put on a source of contaminated water you'll want to drain this off or you're not using the vehicle for a while you'll drain this off waste you would get rid of on your site and not drive around with any waste water because it's just going to eat weight into your payload so they've got a designated disposal point on site to drain off your waste and these are electronic dumps, so they're on the control panel to drop your water. So using your other habitation key, which is your flip key, which again has a swift emblem on, you can open this locker here. And this is your wet locker. So you can carry your hookup lead in there, your levelling ramps, your hose pipes, anything that you don't want to get wet and muddy into the back garage here, you can put in here, store in there, and it's a sealed locker which you can just hose out. But make sure it's locked before you travel. And then on the back of this model you do have a garage. So it's a garage model, so using the habitation key you'll be able to open the garage door. And you do have storage. You've got a radiator from your Aldi system, so it's heated in here. You've got tethering points on the floor. And the back bed is height adjustable. So to adjust the bed, using the winding handle, you can wind it up. And down, depending on the height you want the bed to be. So once you've raised the bed into the highest position, you've got this board here. 
So turn the two turnbuckles off the board and lift it up and it clips in on this side and you've got extra headroom and it does exactly the same on the other side. But when you want to bring this board back down in this corner, you've got to pull this lever. So just here, you just pull this out and that will allow the board to drop down and go back into position once you've lowered the bed. So in the garage, just behind this panel here, is where your winter drain down valve is for your Aldi boiler. And I can't stress enough how important it is to drain your boiler down in the winter, because if you leave the water in and it freezes, you potentially need to replace the boiler, which isn't covered under the Swift warranty because it stipulates that you must drain the vehicle down. So to do so, this yellow lever here, you need to flick that up you need to have your fresh and your waste valves open. You need to have all your taps within the van left open. And you need to remove your shower head from the hose and lie the hose in your shower tray with that tap open. Just to eliminate any water that's sitting in any taps, any pipes, any tanks, so that the vehicle is free of water. And then turn the pump on for 10 seconds to blast the pump out because the pump has a filter on that holds water. So 10 seconds and then the pump off and then this vehicle is drained down for the winter. When you come to reuse the van, you want to put this down first. Shut the fresh in the waste tanks. Close all the taps and assemble the shower head back onto the shower hose. Fill the vehicle with fresh water. Once you've put the fresh water in, you can then put the pump on and open the cold tap. Once you've opened the cold side of the tap, go to the hot, it'll cough and splutter, make all sorts of noises for three to five minutes. Once you've got a pressurised flow on one tap, do them all and your system is primed. But you must drain the system down to so make sure this yellow valve is left up when not using the vehicle when we're experiencing frost. To empty a cassette, open the door first with using your habitation key. Push both catches in to release the door. And then pop your hand underneath the orange handle and slide the cassette free from the vehicle. You can then either carry it or it does have wheels on and a handle so you can drag it to the waste disposal point. To empty, turn the spout out, take the cap off, pop the cap to a side Pour the contents out and press the button at the same time, allows a bit of air and stops it glugging. Once you've emptied the waste out of the cassette, there is normally a tap at the disposal point. Pop some water in, pop the cap back on, give it a rinse, tip out again before going in with a cap full of chemical. This cap is 120 ml. Green or blue chemical into here. If you're using the tablets, it's just a pint of water into the cassette which you can flush down the toilet once the cassette's in place and then drop a tablet in the cellophane wrapper into the cassette and that will break up into the chemical. Here you have a external 230 volt socket. So if you were wanting power underneath the awning or you were wanting to put a full size awning on for power, as long as the vehicle's hooked up you'll get mains power off this plug. And here you have an external barbecue point. So using the bottle on board, you can tap into this for your Kadak. Quick release connection into here with a Jubilee clip connecting it onto some orange hose, connecting the Jubilee clip to the other side of the Kadak or barbecue before turning the gas valve on to allow the gas to come to this point. At the passenger door is where you'll be able to fill with fuel. So you can fill with diesel using the main key as it's a lockable fuel cap and then underneath you've got add blue so this is 19 litres on a Decato and it will indicate on the dash when the add blue level is getting low. Pull into the forecourt and fill it up off the pump as this is a cheaper option than buying it in the drums however if you have got a garage model you can keep this in the garage a 10 litre drum and when the light comes on you just fill it and this will do 5,000 mile on a full tank of add blue it normally illuminates when it's about a thousand mile left of liquid in the tank, giving you a warning that it's time to fill back up. To open the bonnet on a Fiat Decato, 
located beside the passenger door. If you open the door, you'll get to the lever. You can pull this down and open the bonnet. Once underneath the bonnet, you do have all your fluids. The main one you're going to need is your screen wash, which is located here. Lift this part of the scuttle off and you can fill your coolant. And then next to it, you have your brake fluid. You've got your oil filler, your earth for giving or receiving a jump start. So this is where you put your black clip. And then you put your positive, which is your red clip, using the key or anything flat. Pop this here, pull this back, just unlocks it because it's on a strong clip. And you can put your positive there for giving or receiving a jump start. So to use the swift control panel, your on off button here is your master switch for 12 volt, which has got the swift logo on. So if you press that, you'll either start the panel up or you'll be able to get back onto the menu. Starting from the left hand side, you've got your pump, which you can turn on and off. Making sure that you've got enough water on board first. If you haven't got any water on board, don't turn your pump on. Next, you've got your awning light, which is the light on the outside of the vehicle. So you can turn this on. You've got your lights, which you can turn on and off here. But you can also dim them by going by 5% every so often by using the plus and the minus. Power, you can see the charging rate. So you can see the charging rates of your leisure. So it's shown it at 14.1 volts and there's currently 1.3 amps coming in are being drawn off the battery should I say. You've got your solar which brings in next to nothing when the vehicle is hooked up to mains as hookup is the priority and brings in a lot more voltage than a solar panel could compete with. And you've got your vehicle battery reading. However, they're both given false readings because the vehicle is hooked up and the charger is charging those batteries. So unhook the vehicle to get a true reflection of what charge is in your batteries. It'll also say at the bottom there, select battery. It says leisure. Leisure is the active battery. If that says vehicle, you want to always make sure that says leisure because that's the battery that the motorhome's using to power the lights, the fridge, the hob, the, tw the 12 volt fan on your Aldi system, and so on. You always want to ensure that that is on leisure because you don't want to flatten your van battery. But your water levels, so you can see your fresh and your waste water levels. You've also got on the bottom tank heaters. So if it's going to freeze overnight and you're away in the van, turn the tank heaters on and this will stop the water from freezing as it heats the water up in the tank by probes. If you're not using it, drain the vehicle down. Level alert, so you can have that on or off. It'll just mean that the panel will flash when you get so low on water. Frost alerts, you can turn that on or off. With the blue band around it, that means it's on. When it's grey, it's off. And frost alerts will look at the temperature and it will illuminate and flash when it says it's going to freeze. Emptying the fresh water, you can press this and you need to confirm it. And this will open the electronic valve. And emptying the waste is your dirty water, your grey water, which you do over the designated point on site. And press confirm again and this will open the valve on the outside of the vehicle. To drain off the fresh or the waste. Heating, we'll do the heating panel separate settings. You can change the date and the time, you can pair your phones to it. Um, you can turn the key bleep off if it's annoying you and you can put it into night mode. And you can also operate the fridge through the panel. So I'll show you how to operate it on this panel, but I'll also show you separately how to operate the fridge on its own control panel. So you can turn the fridge off. 
You put the fridge on automatic. Automatic means it jumps through these three sources. So 230, 12 volt gas. It picks out the best source available to the fridge, depending on what source is on the vehicle. And it will always, always prioritize mains 230 volt when hooked up. If you were to unhook the vehicle and the gas bottle was open, it would switch over to gas by itself. Or if I was to start the vehicle's engine, it would go on to the 12 volt DC setting, which is only designed for traveling. When the engine's running, it acts as a giant cool box, but it's got to be chilled beforehand. However, on automatic, it does wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas. Once the engine's knocked off, this is in case you have forgot to isolate your gas cylinder. In this case, if you're a wild camping and you wanted the fridge to go on the gas straight away, you would just have to turn off the automatic setting and press gas. Plus and the minus, adjusts the temperature of the fridge. So when pre-chilling, have it on five. Once you put your shopping in, turn it down to three or four, because sometimes five can be too strong and cause ice within the fridge but it also gives you an indication here that the fridge temperature at the moment is warm once that says it's cold you can adjust the temperature to suit to operate your heating and hot water on this model it's powered by aldi so you turn your aldi panel on allow it to go through its cycle and the first thing it will bring up is your room temperature. So you can have this as high as 30 degrees, which is the bottom digits, which is says 30 at the moment. And above that, where it says 10.5, that is the room temperature that it's currently at. So it shows you the temperature that it's at and the temperature that you've selected. You can adjust this by the plus and the minus, so you can set it to what you want. And then if you press menu, it tells you that the fan circulating, the indoor temperature is 10.5. You are hooked up. And then you've got two settings at the bottom. So you've got the hot water, which if you had no water in the boiler and the boiler was drained down or no water in the tanks, you wouldn't have the hot water system on at all. So you want, you'd make sure that says off. However, if you do, we can have it on. So that's the first setting and it will run together with the heating. If you selected boost, it's a 30 minute cycle and it provides all the heat to the water. So it will stop heating the motorhome and it will heat the water first for 30 minutes. So if you were in desperate need of hot water, i.e. in the summer when you don't need to use the heating because it's warm anyway, you could put this on to boost. Selecting energy, you can choose which energy source you're heating your water, the vehicle, or either on. So you've got electric at the top, so you've got one kilowatt, which is 750 watts of mains power. You've got two kilowatts, which is 1850 watts of mains power, or you've got three kilowatts. This all depends on which amperage the site provides you. If you get a 16 amp feed, you can use between two and three, depending on what other appliances you run at the same time. If you're running too much, you may blow the vehicle uh, or the site electrics. However, if you're on a smaller site, getting a 10 or an 8 amp feed, you may have to use one kilowatt, but that's more abroad or on smaller airs or CLs. On most sites throughout the UK, you get 16 amp feed anyway. If you're not hooked up, you would just use gas and it's as simple as turning it on and off. And that would use it off your gas bottle. So make sure that's turned on. Or if you're away in the winter and you're wanting to warm the vehicle up quicker, selecting the electric and gas together will reduce the time it takes to heat the vehicle. Scrolling down, the priority is electric. You've got a load high altitude mode. So this is only for use 
at altitudes over a thousand meters so if you're quite high up in the mountains or somewhere abroad um, or a thousand meters above sea level you would turn this on and this just allows it to work a little bit better because it's obviously there's a lot less oxygen higher up so it allows the heating system to work a better according to the environment it's in and then if you press menu again you can set day and night mode which, which is where you select the temperature how long you want it to run for um, so you might have day mode set to a steady 22 23 degrees but then during the night you might want that to drop on night mode to 15 degrees or less so setting these and turning these on will do that for you without you touching the panel you've got all your display sound screen calibration language and service information but the main one you've got is you've got a reset button on page three of the settings so if there's ever come up with a fault and you can't get rid of the fault the first thing you want to try is resetting this panel so you'd press reset and you would have to go in and select the temperature the energy source and the hot water setting all again so to operate the Dometic fridge press the power button like I was saying between auto auto jumps between mains hookup gas and 12 volt when the engine's running and to change this you press mode so auto will always prioritize the best source available at the van which at present is mains if I was to unhook the vehicle because I've got gas on it would switch over to gas and if I was to put the keys in the ignition and start the engine it would go to the 12 volt setting the 12 volt setting is only when the engine's running and it's only designed to maintain the temperature that it's currently at so it won't get cold if you do a six hour drive from not having it on however if you've pre-chilled it a couple of days before you're going away put your shop in the night before and now you're ready to drive off the next morning the shopman will be cold the fridge will be cold and it will maintain that temperature when you do a two hour run to your site and then you hook back up and it'll automatically switch back over to hook up or if you're going on to gas it does wait 20 minutes before lighting in case you forgot to isolate your gas cylinder and you've pulled in for fuel so in this case it would wait 20 minutes before automatically lighting on gas if you wanted to override that you would just press the mode button here and selecting gas you've got your temperature here as well five being the coldest one being the warmest have it on five when pre-chilling once you put your shopping in you may want to turn it down to three or four because sometimes five can cause ice within the fridge it's very important when not using the fridge that you've cleaned it out and removed your items but you don't want to shut the door because if you shut the door it's got a rubber seal on there and it will trap the air and over time that will cause a smell within the vehicle so what you need to do is open the door on the top of this door you've got a little catch which comes out that locates onto a little stopper on the frame and keeps the door open which allows air to circulate in and out and it's exactly the same for the freezer with the one being here and it allows air to circulate in and out of the fridge and the freezer to avoid smells so in the kitchen you've got one electric hot plate which only works when you're hooked up and is on this dial here and then if you're while camping you would use a gas but it's entirely up to you you might want to use a gas on the site make sure that everything is cool before you put the lid down otherwise you may shatter the glass 
So underneath you've got the grill. And underneath the grill you do have your oven. So located around the vehicle you do have some switches near vents like these. And this is a 12 volt assisted fan on your radiator system because it's a radiator system that Aldi heating. The 12 volt assisted fan helps circulate the heat. However, you do not have to use these. So if you're wild camping and you weren't hooked up to get the most out of your leisure battery, you wouldn't put this on. As the heat will just circulate itself around manually. This just helps provide when it's a little bit colder, turn this on circulating the heat around the van. To operate the Avtex TV, turn the switch on on the side here, which will put it on the standby, and then use the remote, pressing the on button, you'll be able to turn the TV on. Every time you move site, you will have to retune the telly, and to do this, you press the AQT, orange button there, press and hold. It'll ask you if you want to do a rescan, just press yes, OK, and it'll start to rescan and do as many channels as it can. This TV in particular is a smart TV, so it comes with Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, Disney, Freeview Play. So you can connect this TV to a Wi-Fi source in the settings, i.e. your phone, if you're hotspotting off your phone, or if you're fitting a Wi-Fi system to your vehicle, you would just connect it to there. As long as you had a data SIM card in your Wi-Fi system, you'd be able to use your smart functions of your TV. To operate your air conditioning unit, located next to it in the cupboard is a 230 volt fuse spur. So this spur must be turned on to allow power to the aircon unit. But you've got to be hooked up for the aircon to work. So to work the aircon, point the remote to the sensor. And the aircon will come on. You've got your temperature as low as 16 or you can turn it up to 31 degrees you've got your fan speed so you can adjust it from being high to low and it lowers itself down so great for when you're trying to sleep if you're away in the vehicle in a hotter country And you've got modes, so you've got aircon, you've got heating, but with the heating you do have to wait a short period of time, as you can see there it's stopped itself. Once it's been on cooling and you want it to heat, it will wait up to five minutes because it's got to slowly bring the air conditioning unit up to temperature. I can't rapidly do it because it will crack the tank of the aircon. You've got auto or you've got recirculation mode. Opening the remote, you can set timers, timer on and off. And if you ever need to repair your remote, it will come up with a flashing spanner. All you need to do is press and hold to recalibrate the remote with the aircon unit. And you do have the function of the frame of the air conditioning unit having lights in. So you can just turn the lights on by pressing this button here. So that if you want the lights on on an evening, you can. So to assemble the front bed on the 894 Contigi, lower the table down by the button here. Once the table's lowered down, you want to slide the extension part out. 
and you want to fold the table over. But what you'll need to do is you'll need to push it back like so and lift the cushion up and you want to make sure it's on these two stoppers. So you want to get it evenly distributed across the two. So in this case it would need to come over a little bit just so that it's sat on the stoppers. A little bit better like that. And then you'll be able to pull your base cushions forward and drop your backrests in the place. Pull the base cushion forward and drop the backrest into position. So You've also got to give the bed a bit more width, these slide outs on either side, so this board folds over, but there's also a leg underneath that you need to slide down, so both do this, it means you've got a bit more width to your bed at the front, and then you would just put your base cushion at your backrest at the back. base at the front and do the same with this one and that is your bed fully assembled on the 894 so fitted to swift motorhomes they do have a smart lounge layout which gives you traveling seats which fold away when not required so when traveling to assemble the seat you would have first of all take off all the cushions little black knob there you'd hold that back to get the seat back up and then once the seat back is up you need to get your infill seat base cushion and that sits like this so as velcro on the bottom goes to the velcro and you'd slide that in like so then you would use the base cushion and the backrest the smaller ones and pop this one should i say on here which is your backrest because it's hard backed gives you the seat and you put your base cushion which is double cushioned on the back under the head restraint and that gives you your full sized travelling seat. It does have Isofix built into it as well for children's car seats. And to get your foot well, you just want to turn the turnbuckle here, slide that in, and then you have a full sized travelling seat here. So this is your EC600 power supply unit by Sargent. So all the motorhome's electrical system runs through here. So you've got a system shutdown button which will stop any 12 volt power drain from the leisure battery when storing the vehicle but this needs to be on to access the main control panel when using the vehicle otherwise it will just stop all power coming off the leisure battery you've got all your 12 volt fuses so it would be good practice to carry some spare fuses and these are just the normal stand stand size of fuse which are full size not micro and there's a list behind here of what fuse does what and the amperage so do carry some spares and this side you do have your rcd so your main trip tester so if you thought you weren't receiving power the best way to check is trip the vehicle if the vehicle trips you've got power if it doesn't trip it's where you check where you're getting the power from and you've also got your mcbs here for your various appliances around the vehicle and these two for your charger and your heating and hot water system will light up when hooked up. Just make sure they are illuminated if you do have any problems with the heating and hot water. Bringing up a fault code for um, 240 volt 
just make sure that you haven't pressed that because if that's turned off it won't send a 230 volt feed to the Aldi system. So to operate the toilet, pressing the blue button at the back, you've got your fresh water flush. So you flush the toilet first, put a small amount of water in before opening the hatch, which is known as the blade. So you'd open that, everything goes into the cassette. Once you've finished, you'd flush. If you've bought any pink liquid, which is bowl cleaner, this is a, has a fresh water fed header tank it doesn't have a separate header tank so you can't put any chemical in there however what you could do is you could put so much pink with some water in an empty spray bottle spray the bowl flush and then always get into a habit of closing this blade once you've had it open this blade must be closed to get the cassette out the outside of the van if it's left open the cassette won't unlock and when the cassette is full you'll get three green lights underneath the diagram here showing that the it is now time to be emptied and replenished with chemical so located in the wardrobe of this model you do have your aldi header tank and your aldi header tank has g13 coolant in it because coolant warms the radiator as opposed to water like in a house coolant is in a motorhome so it doesn't freeze it's got a min and a max level on, but never top it up until you've ran the system up because like a car, your coolant expands. So the level, once it's pressurized, will go up. So always run it up first, get the true reading of it. If it's still showing low, then you can let it cool down and top it up, but don't do it until you've run it up. This has a five year lifespan. So after five years, Aldi recommend that the system is fully drained of coolant and replenished with new coolant because with it heating up and cooling down all the time, in use, it loses some of its antifreeze properties and that's why it could potentially cause damage to the system and they recommend it to be changed. Check out Aldi's website as they recommend theirs and five other brands of coolant that you can use if you ever need to top it up. So in the back of the Contiki, 896 you do have a island bed this bed is raised up in its highest position it does come lower to about here just so that it gives you a little bit more space within your garage you'll see that you've got storage on either side in wardrobes and some good size overhead lockers